He, one of them, is he still alive? We'll turn into a horse within three years. This is a pretty standard comment across the board. I don't know what that means. I mean, I hope that was a joke. I don't know. I'm still alive, I'm still here. All right. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. For those of you who are new around here, my name is Michael, AKA Dr. Cellini. I'm a radiologist in my sixth and final year of training in New York City, sub-specializing in interventional radiology. Now, I recently posted a video talking about the COVID vaccine side effects I experienced after getting the first dose of the Pfizer vaccine. I thought the video was great, but I thought the comment section was even better. There was a ton of misinformation all throughout those comments. So I felt like I had to do an entire video devoted to some of those comments and kind of debunk some of the misleading information out there and maybe teach you all something along the way. So let's get into it. Now before starting this video, a quick disclaimer because some of you all are going to say, why should I take advice from a radiologist? Shouldn't I be taking advice from an immunologist or a virologist or infectious disease expert? And the answer is yes, but I am a physician. I did have to go through medical school. Every physician understands immunology, bacteriology, virology, and all that stuff. So I feel pretty comfortable talking to you all about it. Comment number one from Sena Javi. Norwegian officials said 23 people had died in the country a short time after receiving their first dose of the vaccine. Now this is hot off the press over the last few days and there is a lot of misinformation about it. So to start off, the 23 people that died in Norway were not a part of an isolated event. Rather, there were 23 people across the country of Norway who recently received the COVID vaccine. 13 of those people happened to be above the age of 80. Now of those people who died, all of them happened to be in nursing homes or long-term care facilities. Now, just as an aside, there are approximately 400 people in Norway that die from these long-term care facilities and nursing homes every single week in Norway, 400. So yes, 23 people across the country of Norway died who happened to receive the vaccine, but that doesn't mean they died because they received the vaccine. There is some speculation that some of these elderly folks can't handle even the mild reactions that we experience from these vaccines. Think of the frail elderly population as an old car that's been in the barn for a long time. It takes a while to get the engine running, but then once it is running, you notice that the oil pan is cracked and all the oil leaks out and the engine shuts down. And think of an elderly person's immune system kind of like this. It's very slow to start up, and if it has to surmount a very large immune reaction very quickly, there can be some issues that arise from that. My point is that small things that are nothing to healthy individuals can have some devastating effects on the elderly population. However, saying that the COVID vaccine itself caused these 23 people to die is purely speculation and unproven at best. So please be careful when reading these clickbaity articles because they can be extremely misleading. The next comment I have, after two to three years, give us updates, please. Actually, it says after two third years, give us update, please. So I've been getting a ton of comments like this, why don't you wait 10 years, five years, and all that stuff down the road because we don't know the long-term side effects of this vaccine. And while that's true, it doesn't necessarily matter that much. And here's why. We have a ton of research on vaccines and from what we do know, almost all of the side effects that come with vaccines happen within the first few days or at most the first couple weeks. And we do have data on these vaccines far surpassing a couple weeks. Keep in mind, we're still monitoring all these patients along the way. Next question or comment. Feels so good to see people looking with their third eye. Don't believe anything about this vaccine. Remember the government people are demons that work for the devil and they want the worst for you. This is a pretty standard comment across the board. I'm more curious about the reaction from the second dose. So I'm actually a week out from my second dose and I haven't really talked about what happened after my second dose because there wasn't really anything noteworthy to talk about. I thought I was going to have more of a fever or chills or body aches, but I had none of that. The only thing I had was kind of like a mild headache for the rest of the evening and maybe on into the morning, but I took a Tylenol and completely went away. That was pretty much it. My arm was actually less sore this time around than it was the first time and I had no real side effects, so I didn't really feel like making a whole video to say I had no side effects. So I'm glad I can put it in this one. Try to have a child now. Want to know if it sterilizes people. There's absolutely no data to support that this vaccine sterilizes people or gives 
any infertility issues whatsoever. Thanks for the video. I must say I noticed dark circles under your eyes, maybe just after holiday fatigue. I'm holding off on this, but I may eventually get it. Curious about your second dose, that really scares me. So I already talked about the second dose, and a few people have mentioned the dark circles under my eyes. First and foremost, these dark circles are genetic in origin. I can't really help them. I have deep set eyes, and even when I'm not tired, I look tired, and when I'm very tired, I look like way tired. So I can't really do anything about it. But yes, one of those parts of the video is I think on Christmas Eve or Christmas night, I filmed at like 10.30 at night after I got home, after I had multiple glasses of wine at dinner for a Christmas dinner and I was a little tired. So maybe that's why I can promise you it wasn't from the vaccine, it was from the wine. The picture looks photoshopped. The girl is off scale. Look at how tiny her hands are compared to yours. So the actual, the girl who gave me this first vaccine was very small and I'm 6'4", I'm a pretty big guy, 6'4", 205. I probably look like a giant compared to her. I promise you it wasn't Photoshop. Why would I Photoshop a person giving me a vaccine? I have proof, I had it done, I had the side effects. That was a real photo. I'm just like literally two and a half times this person's size. Next comment, he, one of them, I don't know what that means. I guess I'm one of those people that gets the vaccine and I don't know. How long will the palsy last? I'm assuming they're talking about Bell's palsy because there's a lot of misleading information that this vaccine causes Bell's palsy and the data shows that is incorrect. Yes, there were cases of Bell's palsy noted in patients who received this vaccine, but not exceeding the normal rate at which people get Bell's palsy, which is around 40,000 cases a year. Therefore, you can't really conclude that these cases of Bell's palsy are actually caused by the vaccine. And per the CDC guidelines, anybody who has had Bell's palsy in the past still can receive the mRNA vaccine. Next comment, you need to post which company and lot number. I thought I posted that in the video, but maybe I haven't shown you my card with both doses on it, so let me get it. All right, so this, let me see if you can see that. I don't know if you can see that. Do you see that? That is the lot number, Pfizer vaccine lot number. I don't really know what you're going to do with this data, but here it is. Is he still alive? I mean, are, are they talking about me? I'm still alive, I'm still here. Two doses, still alive. Those face masks behind you give you a bad image, doctor. I think they're talking about those face masks. If you don't think face masks work at this point, I really can't help you. I mean, there's so much data to support that they work and help prevent the transmission of COVID. So, I mean, I don't know what to tell you. Next comment. Obviously you didn't read the insert of your COVID-19 vaccine. My concern is you're actually going to be a doctor someday. I am a doctor. Do your research and see all the videos of people that are not pulling out of this vaccine healthy. There's a lot of deaths that are not reporting on mainstream news and a lot of people that have uncontrollable epileptic fits 24 seven after the shot. I always wonder, like how is this person the only one to know about this and nobody else knows? He or she is the only person Gina. Gina is the only person that knows about all these deaths and no one else knows about it but them. It's interesting. What can you do? Next. You will turn into a horse within three years. I hope that was a joke. Oh, this is my favorite. What about nurse Tiffany Dover collapsing? No Facebook posts? So this post is talking about Tiffany Dover who got the vaccine and fainted shortly after receiving it. What she actually experienced was something called vasovagal syncope or a vasovagal reaction. This occurs from a sudden drop in heart rate or blood pressure and usually the response of an emotional stress or trigger. She has also stated in a public forum that she has a medical condition where she faints when she senses pain. So essentially she is prone to these vasovagal syncope episodes. Some social media sites have stated that she fainted and died after receiving the vaccine and that has since been disproven. She just had a vasovagal episode which is common for her and more importantly, not caused by the vaccine. You need to give up those bottles behind you at least for a month. These bottles, for those of you who don't know, I collect bourbon and I find rare bourbons. I don't drink them all the time, I just like to collect them, it's like a treasure hunt. So I don't know why I can't drink them for at least a month. Next comment. So if you're not lying, there are no visible side effects, but there could be DNA altering, basically side effects that you can't see visibly. This DNA altering side effect thing is just gross misinformation, and it's clearly from people who don't understand how the mRNA vaccine works. So the mRNA within this vaccine is essentially like a recipe to create a protein. The mRNA is injected in your body, 
it goes into the cell. And when the cell looks at the mRNA, it sees a recipe and all the ingredients it needs to create a protein that's similar to the one found on the COVID-19 coronavirus. So your cell actually cooks up a spike protein and sends it out into your bloodstream. Once it's in your bloodstream, the body recognizes it as a foreign object. The body attacks it, it creates antibodies to it, and your body will forever have these memory antibodies floating around your bloodstream. The hope is that as soon as your body recognizes those spike proteins in the future, your body will automatically attack it and you won't have any symptoms from the virus whatsoever. In fact, I recently read today that the vaccines are 95% effective, but the other 5% of the people who actually got the virus after having the vaccine had very mild symptoms. And in fact, of the 32,000 that received the vaccine, only one of them had a severe COVID infection after receiving the vaccine. And for those of you who keep saying that this alters DNA, the mRNA half-life is very short. It can't survive long outside of its lipid coating within the cell. It is essentially a combination providing a code to make this spike protein. And once it gives off that code, it's done. I know I'm oversimplifying this, but sometimes you gotta. All right, so that officially concludes this video. Hopefully you all learned something from these comments. I tried to make it as educational as possible. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below as always. Make sure you smash the like, subscribe button, follow me on Instagram and TikTok if you don't already. And I'll see you all on the next video.